वेलकम टू सुब्रमणी सम मोर ज्ञान ऑन इन्वेस्टिंग और रदर इन्वेस्टिंग लेसन्स आई कीप डूइंग दिस क्वाइट ऑफन इट्स नॉट मोर इट्स मोर फॉर माई सेल्फ दैन फॉर यू राइट सो फर्स्ट रिमेंबर द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट एट एज इन लाइफ दिस टू शेल पास सो इफ यूर वेरी यूफोरिक इफ यू आर डिप्रेस्ड वॉट एवर डजेंट मैटर दिस टू शेल पास मार्केट्स विल गो अप मार्केट्स विल गो डाउन वैन मार्केट्स गो अप वी थिंक मार्केट कैन नेवर कम डाउन एंड वैन मार्केट इज डाउन वी थिंक मार्केट कैन नेवर गो अप एंड वी विल हैव फेंटेस्टिक रीजन्स फॉर इट राइट ओ मोदी डिड नॉट गेट अ थर्ड टर्म सो नाउ द मार्केट विल स्टे डाउन नथिंग लाइक दैट द कंट्री गोज ऑन इन मटीरियल ऑफ वॉट हैपन्स टू प्राइम मिनिस्टर्स एंड चीफ मिनिस्टर्स एक्सेट्रा राइट ट्वेंटी ईयर्स बैक वी डिड नॉट नो दैट वी वुड हैव अ प्राइम मिनिस्टर कॉल नरेंद्र मोदी right maybe 20 years back we did not have that up we did not know that up will have a chief minister called uh, yogi adityanath we were going on in life and then some people came they made some uh, transformational changes which was fantastic and uh, we have grown does it mean the same thing will continue i am not even getting into whether the same thing will continue but india will continue under a different prime minister under a different chief minister everything will happen so don't worry if this too shall pass don't be euphoric <clears throat> nor be too much worried what happens if this continuity is not there if one goes and another comes nothing really changes in the life of a country right so this too shall pass is something which is important to remember second thing to remember is the most important thing in creating wealth is survival you have to live through it now can you imagine uh, how much wealth Rakesh Junjunwala would have had if he had lived for another 40 years, like Jali Munger, right? Uh, uh, Rakesh died at 62. Uh, he could have lived. Jali uh, Munger is 100. So another 40 years of compounding. Can you imagine what it does? So if you take Buffett's wealth, uh, Warren Buffett's wealth, it is obvious that it is the the magic is n. It is not just the R. Of course, the R is very good, great maybe. But the magic is the end. Eighty years of compounding or eighty-two years of compounding is not any of us will ever get in our lifetimes. It is impossible. So whatever you do, so many years of knowing how to do it and actually doing it and delivering it is not going to happen for everybody for such a long period. So if you are wondering where wealth comes from, it comes from N. So if you take the Birla Group, it is 170 years of compounding. If you take the Bombay Dyeing Wadia Group, it is again about 190, 200 years of compounding. Same thing for the Tata Group. It is the N which matters. R of course has to be good. R cannot be negative. Then you can ruin your uh, wealth, right? I've done uh, videos on how wealth is ruined in families. So I'm not saying that can't happen. But the most important thing is N for a long period of time, right? Uh, risk management is very important, and I would think it is almost critical. Exactly when a time, when at a time when you feel that because of your risk uh, measures. Uh, your friends are going ahead in their return so let me just explain at a time when the market is booming and every share is going up small cap mid cap large cap everything that you buy is going up or rather uh, when you sell you are looking more stupid right that's a time when you think oh my god why do i have so many constraints why do i have so much of risk mitigation techniques that is exactly the time when you need risk mitigation you don't need risk mitigation when the market is down right so suppose uh, we'll talk about the sensex suppose the sensex is today 67000 and it comes down to 57000 that is exactly at the time in which you don't need so much of risk measures but it is at 67000 that you need more risk measures so higher the market the more that you feel that your risk is impeding your growth that is exactly the time so it is very very counterintuitive uh, when you think you don't need risk measures that is exactly the time when you need risk measures right <coughs> and uh, whatever people tell you whatever economists tell you there is nothing called a perfect inflation hedge sometimes it is gold sometimes it is equity sometimes it is real estate and you feel oh i should have done this and i should have not done that then there is a theory which says put money in a multi asset fund all these things are covered but the problem with a multi asset fund is when equity is booming your multi asset fund won't be giving you great returns they will give you adequate returns they may give you moderate returns but that is exactly the time when you feel tempted to say oh my god my 
multi asset is not doing well should i remove from multi asset and put it in uh, equity because that is booming better it is perhaps a reverse thing that you have to do when equity is booming you have to move money from a uh, equity fund to a multi asset but the temptation is counter intuitive you will want to do the reverse right i think narain also spoke about in his uh, speech uh, if you are a kind of a person who will get uh, perturbed by your uh, investments uh, going up and going down then you should be in a multi asset fund because a multi asset fund will give you lesser standard deviation but if you are a person who is chasing absolute return somebody like me then you should be in a fund uh, or you should be in an asset class which has the highest standard deviation and your ability to sit through bad times right so 2002 march if you could buy 2002 april if you could buy uh then you're in good company right so then uh, then you don't need a multi asset fund so see what you need uh, there are so many products maybe 4000 odd schemes of mutual funds largely meant to cater to different people so do you need a multi asset fund it's your call uh and it is not somebody else trying to tell you this is the best time to be in multi asset there is no such best time to be in any asset class time tells you at this point in time like you know 3 years later if let's say the index is uh, at 1 lakh 20000 i mean the sensex which means in 3 years the market has doubled then the best place to be would have been your equity funds because they will outperform your uh, multi asset allocation since we do not know about the future and since we are a type who will panic when such things happen therefore a multi asset fund not because uh, it is the best fund it is the best fund for you under those circumstances right uh, whatever you say the rate of interest at which money is available matters so having seen a 1980 to 2022 bull run in interest rates which means the portfolios went up because the interest rates went down it was a longish bull market in the world us leading the way we do not know how the market is going to behave with higher interest rates see interest rates were so low now with higher interest rates we do not know whether it will come low or remain steady for a much longer period that's the only question will it go up further from here maybe no but will it remain steady here for a year or two and not go down at all is that a question yes it's a question do we have an answer no we don't have an answer because if us does not cut interest rates nobody in the world is going to cut interest rate it takes tremendous amount of guts to go against the us fed right it's a real big daddy in money so interest rates matter a friend of mine uh, 2020 he bought a nice big house in the us and logged in his interest rates at 3% so i asked him do don't you think it will go down he says it might go down but 3% is something which i will always be able to afford over the next 30 years and today it looks like a fantastic deal because the fed is borrowing at a rate greater than what rate he has borrowed right so sometimes you can get lucky but does he always got lucky as he always got lucky with real estate this particular real estate has appreciated some 60% in the last 3 years so to that extent he admits that he is lucky but largely he is an equity oriented guy but he says oh this i this house i got lucky so sometimes you have luck sometimes you have uh, uh, bad luck but interest rates matter in your wealth creation uh, journey right uh, if you think there is any investment in the world which is risk free you are wrong it means you don't understand risk enough every asset is risky uh, equity is risky in the short run debt is risky in the long run right so you go in and put in a hybrid fund right the multi asset fund so you do those kind of things but yes there is risk which means the risk is two types one is you com- you completely lose all the money that you put like you put in say reliance power anil ambani type so you lose everything then the second one is in the mukesh ambani type when there will be fluctuation should reliance be at 2300 2500 or 2700 is it headed to 3000 is it headed to 4000 we do not know so variability standard deviation is also defined as risk so there is nothing called risk free i keep saying look at the uh, american gsec right so the gsec which is supposed to be risk free is down at least 20% from its peak especially even in uh, 
forget longer term bonds even intermediate bonds so yes it is down so you need to understand where is the risk in gsec the risk is in the interest rate it is not in the default risk i am not saying the us government is defaulted no that is not the risk is interest rate risk and that we have all seen uh, svb uh, sv bank right so those kind of exp uh, experiences we have had we have seen so uh, there is nothing which is risk free there is risk the only question is if you think it is risk free uh, are you are not perhaps not understanding enough about the risk Uh, you are not smart because your portfolio has gone up. You are not dumb because your portfolio has come down, right? So, but when the uh, portfolio is up, it's a great time to remove some money and buy some luxurious products because at some stage you will feel, oh, I could have converted, right? So that's your call. But I'm just saying, <clears throat> uh, you are not smart or dumb by what happens in the market. You are lucky or unlucky, perhaps, by what happens in the market. Uh, there are times when everybody loses money like say march 2020 your equity was down your debt was down people were not willing to buy a 9.5% coupon tata power bonds right that is what happens to liquidity liquidity just freezes even in the best quality it was a double a kind of a bond but it was tata power so tata power there was no question of default but 9.5% there were no takers right it was difficult to sell a tata power bond you could sell gilt perhaps but trying to sell even a double uh, a tata group uh, with guarantees no it was not you are not able to do it so there is risk coming from any from so many places you have to understand from where risk can come it can come from liquidity it can come from complete lack of uh, transaction in that product right or the government saying no uh, mutual funds can't buy this kind of a product therefore no mutual fund wants to buy your portfolio so those kind of risk are there right and when everything uh, when everything is down everybody loses money the only thing only asset class which was up was perhaps uh, in the month of april march april 2020 is gold and uh, people were not willing to sell gold right so in your asset class if you had a, a multi asset fund which had gold uh, you would have suffered less but in your real life if you had gold you could have actually sold theory practically nobody sells gold right so inflation is unpredictable immaterial of which part of the world i i did not think maybe 10 years back also that there would be a stage in uh, my life when i would see inflation in the us higher than the inflation in india right we saw that maybe very briefly but we did see that right uh, Uh, past performance is not a great indicator of future performance this is what uh, uh, the mutual fund uh, regulator sebi keeps saying but one thing is certain your past behavior is so i know a person who will sell at the bottom of the market and buy at the peak so if we if i see him buying now i would panic and uh, it's as it's as simple as that not every time can you catch a top and a bottom so don't worry about that but pass but one thing is sure the past behavior is a great indicator of what you are going to do in the future so yes past behavior is uh, too much leverage will one day come and bite you right so whether you are doing fndo or whether you are borrowing from a bank and buying shares whatever one day it will come and bite you like it did to anil ambani uh, but uh, like a mukesh ambani if you know how to control the leverage then you are much better off right uh when a thing happens we knew oh my god i knew this was going to happen that is not true you're bluffing right so remember that also remember like what john templeton said uh, start with a prayer it helps and remember investing is hard it's not as easy as it looks thank you